Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. Some of you may be on Twitter, The Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming at you with a new Let's Play series on a game called Where the Demon Lurks. A furry visual novel about furry demons? A furry demon lord? I'm not sure. I got a brief description of it. it seemed really interesting. It seemed like something could be right up my alley, so I wanted to display it for you guys, show it off. See just where this rabbit hole leads us down, shall I? But anyway, y'all, I suppose let's go ahead and jump right in. Alarm chain, you are up. And let's go. Okay. Prologue. All right. Oh, pretty. Very pretty. Okay. A bloody red light tears a hole through the middle of the office room. The demonic light caresses the countless books held against the walls, tomes that had surely outlived the duties of many a demon lord. Though for all the secrets and worlds kept between their pages, you had seen enough of them. The light rips apart further, a portal, from which you step out into the otherwise fairly regular room. Oh, hello there. A glass bookshelf to your left is bathed in a red-hued light, reflecting your figure. If the horns and yellow iris and the blue flame over your head did not already give it away, you are a demon. Reaching the edge of the desk, you drop your hand against the hardwood and drag it along the surface until you take a seat behind the table. Today you begin your reign over the spawns of the underworld, as the almighty judge of the world's sinners. Today you will make a mark on the world. Another portal opens up in the middle of your office. That familiar, portly, demonic gut, ma gut mouth sticks out first, eventually followed by the dark, bullish figure you know as Vendrake. The right-hand demon of every single demon lord thus far in the flesh. His shirt is so primly tucked into his pants, you wonder how long he spends checking himself out in the mirror every morning. The demon's slow gait combined with his slightly raised chin exudes confidence. If you didn't know any better, you'd think he owned the place, commanding the room with his eons of experience. Despite your place as the Demon Lord, you can't help but acknowledge that this demon is older, wiser, holds just as much power as you do. Congratulations, my lord, on your first day in office. Today you will be having an orientation. I went ahead and got your name card already. Please, check if your name is spelled correctly, my lord. All you have to do is think of your name and the ink will solidify. Please don't turn it into Sir. But Sir Buttface like you did in your youth. <laughs> the portly demon hands you a small rectangular piece of plastic. On the top, there's a title, Demon Lord Probation. Well, in black ink is the name Kobu. Is the name tag correct? Yeah, sure, why not? Is Kobu correct? Yes. The black ink glows white and solidifies upon the name card. Excellent! Now we have a lot of ground to cover. Vendrick snaps his fingers and a large file labeled Demon Lord Orientation appears between his hands. The file looks big enough to be classified as a weapon. You feel sick to your stomach by the mere sight of it. Vendrick... Is this really necessary? I've basically spent half my life around here. Yes, and the other half on Earth where you should have been studying our rules and regulations. I'm going to be getting sass from you the entire time working together? You know I'm the boss now, right? Forgive me, my lord. It is just that there's, no, so, there's so much on the line. And I must ensure that, as your right-hand demon, the underworld's affairs run smoothly. After all, your father left his greatest legacy to you. This kingdom and all its inhabitants. Your shoulders fall from the weight of Vendrick's words. Yeah, he did a lot for the Underworld. That's why I want to get straight to it. I've got big plans for the Underworld. You know, uh, get a think tank going on with the other generals. Maybe pick their brains about what they think needs improving. Vendrick rubs his forehead and frowns. With all due respect, the Underworld got to where it is after years of meticulous work by your father. I'm sure all the demons are fine with how things are, so you don't need to rush in and start changing things up. Just maintaining the place is already good work. No, I disagree. The Underworld is great and all, but there's always room for an upgrade. Isn't that part of keeping the Underworld running well, too? Either way, the other generals are already scheduled to meet you after orientation to give a personal presentation on their job scopes. That sounds so stuffy. It's the way things have been done during your father's time. That's how we orient all new recruits. Just be glad you get, to, you get the live presentation, not the pre-recorded ones. I don't want to come off as one of those snooty bosses that hides behind his desk all the time. It would be good to meet the generals in person to show that I'm relatable and approachable. Might I remind you, my lord, this is a workplace, not a social club. And let me remind you who's the one wearing the Demon Lord name tag. Vendrick raises a finger to tell you, but pulls it back. He frowns slightly, but to you, he's always frowning. Very well, I'll inform them that you will be visiting, and that they are to explain the full extent of their work. Briefly. Yes, briefly, but please, consider the consequences of your actions, my lord, before you do them. Now let's begin the orientation. Do you remember the form BTK-95 is for? Um, I want to say Throne uh, Torture Tool Damage Report. No, it's a place that should be on fire is not on fire report. 
Let us review. You're still going to pay attention to Vendrick's lecture. More than once, you find yourself staring at the floor, thinking about the next video game you want to get on Earth. Of course, each time you're caught not paying attention, Vendrake would slap the table loudly with his tail to bring you back to the education at hand. He also goes into a long explanation about his role as Chief of Security, how his forces patrol the underworld to maintain order, and the various boring documents they fill out on a daily basis to do so. When Vendrake has finished his spiel, a mini-policy documentary, all you want to do is get out of the office and start meeting your crew. Your portal opens up a, op opens upon a mayor's uh, workshop, just one of the many office floors that, con that comprise the never-ending soul-crushing depths of the underworld. Bright round orbs of light hover in the sky in the sky-high ceiling, illuminating the entire area below. Space can be likened to a hangar filled to the brim with, with containers and machines. Large, powerful air vents stand where one would expect windows to reside, but then again, there is nothing that exceptional to see in the underworld, at least for you. As you walk towards the cat, oh. I like the char really like the character designs. They kind of remind me of Hades, honestly. As you walk towards the cat, the art style. As you walk towards the cat demon standing over his workbench, you recall your youth. You visited this workspace several times while growing up. A mayor would always give you the newest toy he had created, which regularly ended up with him receiving an earful from your father. When you were older, you learned that the toys were a con were actually experimental weapons. Still, you found a mayor to be amusing, and now you have a chance to know him on a professional and personal level. Small, spider-shaped spider robots scurry along the workshop, carrying pieces of metal, wires, and other technology you do not recognize. They're working to organize materials in the many large cabinets that line the workshop walls. The cat demon has yet to notice your presence. Instead, he is hands deep inside the back of what looks like a modified fridge. As he yanks random wires from the machine, his translucent arms float above him to take notes. The sleek appearance of the magic-infused metal always catches your eyes. No other demon in the underworld possesses such a device, and only a mare knows how to work them. You tap a mare on the shoulder. Hey, what are you doing? Ah, intruder! The, sp the, small, the spider bots all turn towards you, the unmistakable hum of their blasters charging echoes throughout the warehouse. A, a mare, it's me! You wave to the demon general with a laid-back smile. Oh, oh, uh, Lord Kobu, uh, retract kill command! A loud ping echoes throughout the workshop and the spider bots return to their original tasks. I I'm surprised to see you here today, my lord. One of his floating arms tears off the note. It was... Oh yeah, I just noticed they're floating. Tears off the note it was writing earlier and readies itself to jolt down something new. Uh, didn't Vendrake send out a memo that I'm coming over? Uh, did he? Uh, uh, hmm. I I've been so busy working on my invention, I, I hadn't checked my mail. Well, I'm just visiting the generals to get to know you guys, since it's my first day and all. I, I want to know what makes you guys tick, so to speak. I, I see. If my lord wants to know about me, I have my specs right here. Uh, display specifications. A large screen descends from the ceiling and turns itself on. It shows what looks like a blueprint of a mare's body. As you can see, I'm made out of 90% carbon, 5% demonic energy, and 5% mystic metal. A fun I function on a diet of lemon soda and fish sticks. In terms of reproduction, I have... I have three penises. No, I don't know. They're a demon. I don't know how many dicks they have, or vaginas, or whatever. Whoa, hold it. I don't. I didn't literally mean what you're made of. I just want to talk and pick your brain a little about your job. Would you like me to display the contents of my brain for you, my lord? I can get a machine to show you the shape of my brain in little time. A weak smile forms on your face. Okay, Amer, let's start over. What are you working on there? Ah, yes. I received a call earlier asking if my refrigerator was running and that I should catch it if it was. So I was performing a full diagnostic to see if my fridge had gained the ability to run and to investigate what component gave it that new ability. Amer, that was a prank call. Someone was just trying to trick you. Oh, so, so my fridge didn't learn to run yet? His ears droop upon hearing the truth. I mean, you could make it happen if you'd want to. Yeah, I could make it run after the souls and trap them in a black hole that sends them back into the never-ending cycle of running and getting trapped. His floating arms act so fast and jot down his thoughts. You're relieved that the general bounced back so quickly. I gotta say, you have a lot of stuff here. Yes, I need them to fix or modify the torture machines we use, since souls tend to become accustomed to their torturing over time, and we need to change their hellish experience every so often. Although it sounds like that would tap, take up a lot of resources and effort. It does, which is why I came up with an idea. As you know, we already have experience projecting the memories of souls. So what if every few hours we remove the soul's most recent memory so that the soul does not remember the experience of their torture? Then we can recycle the same torture method. Exactly! So why aren't you doing it then? I ran the proposal with the research committee. It's been stuck in the pending phase for over a hundred years. I just need to test the prototype somewhere. Hmm, I might be able to help. 
What if I grant you permission to test it with a few souls in the physical punishment zone? Really? That's all I would need to get started. Then we have a plan. I'll put it through after I'm done with my visit. I must get back and check on the device. If you'll excuse me, my lord. Mary gives you a fastidious bow and rushes off towards one of his many cabinets to find his next machine. Just the right time for you to open a portal to head back for, uh, head back and uh, head back over and visit Fortis. Nope. What? The de oh. The demon snack area. You step into a brightly lit break room. Oh my god. The smell of coffee and baked goods that used to be here at some point still lingers in the air. On the left of the room is a table that holds the instant mixes. God, this is rem this this makes me think of um Hades mixed with Helltaker. <laughs> Creamers and sugars and what the workers use. The table itself is stained with telltale ring marks of the many drinks that were created upon it. You are drawn to the back by the smell of paper. The kind of... The kind you have, you have smelt so often in Fortis' home. Back then you would train your combat skills with him on the weekends. At the end of the long day, he would make a big feast that incorporated his own blend of signature peppers for you and his giant siblings. You find the Rottweiler demon lounging on a beaten-looking beaten -looking sofa while squeezing a spring-hand grip. Fortis! Hey, boss, get over here! Fortis, volume! Oops, my bad there, boss. Wait, can I call you boss? Uh, or you prefer I call you my lord, like everyone else? Either way, it's fine, Fortis. You don't have to go changing for me just because just I've got a new job. Heck yeah! Boss it is, then. Yeah, that's a title for someone with power. So, what's made you want to have this face-to-face -face meeting? I figured it would be the best way to get off, get off on the right foot while introducing myself to you guys as the new demon lord. Well, look at you being so thoughtful. So for formality's sake, what do you normally do around here? I know you run the physical torture area, but I bet there's more to it than just that. Heck yeah, there's more to it than that. I run a team of torture demons. That means coming up with new torture techniques and planning out the work schedule so my staff can keep busy. We demons may be tough, but wear and tear happens if you keep pushing your team and you sore yourself too hard. Besides, you can't grow muscles without rest. Makes sense, as the second oldest general out of a lot of them. You got any ideas for improving your work? Heck yeah, I recommend we start everyone on a protein-only diet. Oh, come on now, seriously? Then you've got to keep training. M me? Fortis stomps his foot on the hardwood floor. You can't let a cushy CEO job turn you into a ball of flab. Fortis, volume. Fortis coughs. Right, don't think your underlings are loyal to you out of love alone. We're all demons, creatures born from chaos and man from chaos to manage chaos. The reasons the demons serve the demon lord is because they know he is the strongest here is. If you start showing weakness, someone's going to get the bright idea they can take your place. That's why I'm doing this. If I can show I can make the underworld better, they'll know I'm just as capable as Pa. You will be. You gotta believe in your mind's muscle. Huh? Just believe. Okay, okay, I believe you. <clears throat> Uh, moving on, maybe you'll be interested in running an idea I have for advertising the Underworld to the people on Earth. Like rerunning those old dream ads? Nah, those won't work. People can't. People don't take dreams that seriously anymore. I'm thinking of spreading fear about the Underworld using the internet. You can do that with the internet? Well, yeah, what do you use it for? Uh, stuff? Does Vendrake know about this? I'll let him know later. It's one of the perks of my position. Alright then, I'll have you think up of an idea for the ad video, and I'll ask Knox about helping you out. Maybe I can do a training video. You know, show how powerful our demons are. That ought to scare those mortals down the right path. Sounds like a good idea. Glad you like it, boss. We're all set then. Sweet. I'll catch you later then, boss. I've got a group cardio session with the next batch of tortures before their shift starts. I thought you only torture souls. Hey, team exercise is good for morale. You might want to consider doing some too. You're getting a gut. It's a dad bot. People find it sexy. You're not a dad yet, boss. Florida springs up and waves goodbye before opening a portal to leave. Right. All that's left is Knox. wonder where he's going to be. He cast open your portal and step through. My office? Why am I back here? You see your desk right across the room. Walking over, you sense something off about your table. It's like looking at a line and somewhere in the middle, someone drew another line on top of the first, giving your table a feeling of disconnectedness between the left and right side. Knox? Oh. Hello there. Something shimmers and ripples like like water in midair, revealing the last of your generals. Welcome back, my lord. Nox, what are you doing here? You sent word that you wanted to see us generals in person, so I thought I would come over to save you the trip. 
Aw, oh, thanks. But you didn't have to. I was actually looking forward to seeing how things are outside the office. Apologies. I'll make a note for that in the future. As you walk over to your desk, you notice a stack of papers that weren't there before. When you sit down, there's a sticky note attached to said paperwork. Here, here are the forms requiring your review. Here are the forms requiring your review and approval. I started you easy with just a thousand documents to read. Vendrake. P.S. My position about the underworld is a beacon of judgment since the days of your father still stands. Vendrake. You turn your attention back to Knox. I'd say take a seat, but I see you brought your own. Knox responds to your attempt at a joke by blinking with a blank expression. His blink unsynchronized with each eye. It's a joke, because you're floating. Never mind. Knox floats closer to the front of your desk and puts a webbed finger on his chin. Interesting, my lord. You tried to use comedy to connect with me. Now, why would you make such a choice? Yeah, I don't know. It just felt natural. On that note, what is natural for a demon? Is the nature of a demon similar to a demon lord? This is journal. Mare, name the mare. A mare is the self-proclaimed genius of the underworld. Paul's dad created him, which makes him the third general to be created by the demon lord's past. The dude's mad about tech and machinery. He always He's always looking into how things work and how he can upgrade his own inventions. Although he can go overboard sometimes, and when he does go off the deep end, he commits to it. Once I asked him to recreate this console I saw on Earth, but he made it into a flying drone that blasted lasers every time I pressed a button. I just wanted to play Wowzer's Odyssey. <laughs> Demons. There's a word for those of us who live, in the, who live and work in the underworld. Demons. It took a great-great-grandpa thousands of years of PR to get the people from Earth to have the word stick, into their, stick in their own mortal lexicon. I heard they ran nightmare ads among famous philosophers and poets back then. I've seen some of those old ads. It's uh, usually a demon in a bow tie going, Sinners beware! Stay off the path of righteous living, and you'll win a free trip to the underworld with your personal torture demon to torment you for the unfathomable eternity of non-existence itself. Which was then followed up with a free tour that may or may not mentally scar the fragile mortal. Fortis and I are, cl are close. Like, he's a demon I can have a drink with any time. Great-grandpa created him and his brothers to help guard the underworld from any soul dumb enough to attempt escaping. Despite his single head, he's actually a Cerberus demon. Anyone who dares to point that out would be punched into next week. His greatest passions are working out, getting others to work out, and his brothers. Heck, sometimes I've been so un I've been so unlucky to have been roped along into his cruel training regimen. Ugh, it's already exercised just from evading him during his workout ties. Sweet. Nox, come back to me. We don't have time for all your questions today. Would you? What would you ask of me then, my lord? I want to know what do you do as a general of mental torture? Hmm. The demons under me rely a lot more on our magic than, say, the demons of the physical torture area. We craft mazes and traps that inflict the most amount of suffering upon souls. As you can imagine, it is very taxing on our psyches as well. I'm gonna go ahead and pause it right here. Thank you all for watching. This is the first episode of Where the Demon Lurks. I'm really enjoying this so far. It's very, very cute and witty. I love the art style. Really high budget looking. Can't wait to delve more into it. But anyway, y'all, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks or a tip if you can. It always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.